What's the word, family? Today's video, we're going to talk about sync placements. Yeah, getting your music on film and TV. If you're a songwriter, band, producer, composer, whatever you identify as, this is the video for you. Make sure you stick around to the end. I'm going to show you how to actually research a music library. Find music within that library that fits the style and or genre that you currently produce. Then identify how to submit those songs to those music libraries for an opportunity for placements. Let's get into it. For those of you all that are new to my channel, my name is Taylor. I go by to infinity. I've been producing music for the better half of seven years. And for me, Getting my music on film and TV wasn't initially what I wanted to do. It wasn't my goal. I initially wanted to work with artists, get into the studio, and that's what I did. And I did that for a long time. It wasn't until I had a friend telling me about what he does as far as music production goes. And you might have guessed it by the title in the video, Placements for Film and TV. Before we jump into the tips, let's define what a music library actually is. A music library, also known as a production music library, is a collection of pre-recorded music that can be licensed for use in various audiovisual productions, such as films, TV shows, commercials, video games, and other multimedia projects. The Super Bowl that just passed was filled with production music. Music libraries typically offer a wide range of genres, including orchestral, rock, pop, electronic, world music, hip hop, cinematic music, and more. The music in the library is composed, produced, and recorded specifically for use in audiovisual productions and is designed to be easily integrated into a project. That's where the format starts to differ between a normal song that you would hear on the radio and a song that you would see placed in the Super Bowl ad. So what happens is, say for a show on Netflix, whatever the most popular show is, for each show, there's usually a group of people or a singular person that's responsible for finding the music that's gonna be used for a specific scene or for the entire episode that you see on TV, right? And so now, they need the music. They, so they have to get their music from somewhere. So what happens is, they reach out to these music libraries and they, they find music that fits for their individual scene. That's the role of a music library. There's sort of that intermediary between us as the composers and the actual company that's needing the music for their project. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, let me know in the comment section below. Let's continue to have this conversation. Again, for me, I see a lot of information out about sync licensing. There's some really good information. I've also seen information that's missing quite a bit of context and it could possibly be leading you all astray. Now that we have an understanding of what a music library is, let's jump into the first tip. Your first step is going to be to research. And for me, this is where it gets really, really fuzzy for a lot of people. There's a lot of different advice and a lot of different approaches that people have when it comes to researching music for film and TV. Here's my approach. First, already understand or have identified the type of music that you make, whether that's trap beats, whether that's pop beats, whether that's cinematic music, whatever that looks like already have an idea of the type of music that you make. That's step one. The second step is gonna be knowing what genre that you make and then looking up that specific genre within that library. One thing that I've noticed is that what my perception of rap and hip hop, it might be completely different than what a library considers as rap or hip hop. And the same goes for multiple genres. Make sure that you and the library are talking the same language. The third step when it comes to researching a music library is to see are they even landing placements in the genres that you are strongest at producing or composing. In my experience, a music library that accepts hip hop beats, for example, they'll take them all day. But if you look at their most recent placements, they're not landing anything that, that falls within that hip hop genre. So be really mindful about that before you even start to submit anything to that library for the chance of being accepted and then ultimately being sent briefs for their clients. That's the important part here. Again, like I said, stick around to the end of the video. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. So all of that is what I consider step one, is the research. Once you get a solid understanding of what type of music that you make, and you're speaking the same language that they're speaking when it comes to getting your music on film and TV, then we're in a good spot. Step two, and it's almost a prerequisite, if you ask me, is to join a PRO. So what's a PRO? 
A PRO is a performance rights organization. These can include ASCAP, CSAC, and BMI here if you're locally in the United States. When your song is played over a broadcast network such as TV or radio, these songs earn royalties, and you get paid for your PRO. So joining a PRO is also important for tracking where your music is being used and for getting statements to understand your placements. You have to join a PRO, people. It's not really... Let me say this. If you don't join a PRO, you're going to be missing out on a lot of money that you would normally get from having your song placed on film and TV. So make sure that you're joining a PRO. That is extremely important. Don't get lost on which PRO is going to pay you more. It's to me, there's been no research that has shown that ASCAP pays more than BMI or that CSAC pays more than BMI or BMI pays more than CSAC. Don't get caught up in those kind of silly conversations. It's almost the same as like the Doll Wars. FL Studio better than Ableton. Ableton better than Pro Tools. Logic's better than Studio One. Don't get caught up in that conversation. Join a PRO. See if you like it. At the, at the end of the day, you can always switch. Personally, I'm with ASCAP. I've been with ASCAP since the start of my music career. I like how they run business. I'm not going to jump into the reason why I decided to choose ASCAP over BMI because it doesn't matter. I don't want to sway you all's opinion either way. Just know that you need to join a PRO. Let's jump into tip three. So once you've done those prior steps and you understand the type of music that needs to be made and you've already made the music, now it's time to actually submit those for placement opportunities. But wait, we have to understand the difference between production music and royalty-free music. So what is royalty-free music? If any of you all have used websites like Splice, or anything of the nature, that is a royalty-free sound. The music part is literally the song version of that. Websites like Palm 5, Premium Beats, and Audio Jungle are places where you can go to submit your music for royalty-free projects. Now, what I would add to the royalty-free conversation is that usually these are membership-based programs or companies where anybody who's a content creator, they can come in and they can find the music that fits their projects themselves, and they'll pay a monthly subscription and then they'll get access to a huge catalog of music where they can again decide what they want what i've seen is that those creators that submit to those opportunities they're going to get a piece of every single you know download of their specific royalty free music again that's not my personal cup of tea because it's a it's a little slower if you ask me but that, again it's a very valid source of income i'd say if that's something you want to take a stab at Go for it. Now we have production music. The biggest difference between royalty free and production music is going to be the production music pays royalties. It's that's the biggest difference is that it, the production music pays royalties. So that's the difference. So now we get into step three. Now we're going to be presenting our projects to these music libraries. So what I would say you do here is make sure you're following each of the company's specific submission policy guidelines. Each company is going to have a little bit different of a process, but usually the majority of them are going to have you send them an email. Check the description below. I have a template that you all can use to start sending your emails to these companies to be requesting acceptance into their music library. If you find that a company is not currently accepting any new members into their library, don't fret. Make sure you take note on your calendar. Check back in a month, two months, three months. They might actually be accepting submissions at that time. Don't get bent out of shape about it. There are thousands of libraries that you can possibly choose from and submit your music to. So don't get caught up on one. So what happens after you submit your music to the library? Well, first, you need to understand that being accepted is not going to happen immediately. You're going to have to wait. And so what I suggest you do in the meantime is continue to produce music. Keep making music. Keep following. Rinse and repeat this process over and over. Identify a new genre that you want to eventually produce for. Find you a new music library. Follow that same process that we talked about earlier in the video, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. That way you're not sitting on your hands and waiting for a response from one library. Because remember, they can tell you no. Here's a couple of bonus tips that I wanted to make sure you all had before submitting your music for film and TV. Try not to just send one project at a time. What I mean by that is one song. Have at least five to 10 songs already created that you're gonna send off for the music library to listen to. That's gonna improve your chances of them immediately taking your project and it's ready to go. It's ready to go. Instead of sending them one song, two songs, or three songs, 
which then now, if you do get accepted, they're going to want you to expand upon those works anyway. Why not come out the gate with a project already ready for them to stamp it and we're ready to go. My second secret tip, make sure that you remember to be professional. Remember, everything that you do from that first email communication that you send over sets a tone. So with your first email, if you're not professional, you there's, there's grammatical errors or spelling errors, or you're not paying attention to their submission policy guidelines, you're gonna immediately X yourself out from any type of work with that specific music library. Remember that. First impressions really do mean a lot in the industry. My next tip is gonna be song length. So for me, I like to produce songs anywhere between one minutes and 30 seconds up to two and a half minutes. For me, that's been my sweet spot. That way it allows me for an A section, a B section, and maybe like an alternative C section. For me, that gives a music supervisor a lot of choices to choose from and improves my chances of seeing my music on film and TV. If you wanna see how I've done this, Check out this video right here. The card's up here somewhere. Find it. It's up here somewhere. Click on that after the video and go learn you something. In that video, you're going to watch me produce a song from start to finish. It'll give you a really good idea of how to not only structure your music for film and TV, but it'll also show you what I personally do and how I produce and compose my music. Another pro tip that I would even give you all, use a service like Disco to house your music. That way it's an already populated playlist. It looks professional. It's what they're using nine times out of 10 anyway. On the screen, you'll see an example of what I mean by disco and how it's used. If you want to see me do a video on disco, let me know in the comment section below. To me, it's been a lifesaver as far as making sure that my music is packaged as professionally as possible. I'm meeting the library halfway. They're already using disco anyway. So if I'm using the same tool that they're using, I'm not saying it's gonna increase my chances of getting into a library, but I'm saying it might increase my chances of getting into a library. Another hidden tip that I would even include is gonna be make sure that you're not using music loops inside of your production for film and TV. Now, the difference here is that it's okay to use drum sounds. It's okay to use like stabs and one shots. That's fine. I would also say stay away from vocals. The reason why you don't want to do that is because I hate to say it and it's not and it's not me personally saying this. I love Splice. You can check my channel. I have all types of videos about Splice and how to use it and how to manipulate a loop. The problem becomes unfortunately there's a negative stigma on using loops within production music because of the clearance and how hard it might be to prove who's actually the creator of that original sample. 10 times out of 10. If you're using a melodic loop from Splice, you aren't the original creator of that melody. What these music libraries want is a one-stop clearance. And that's the key word. If you can prove that you're the only person that they have to talk to to get clearance to use this music for film and TV, that will increase your chances of getting accepted into a music library. Next, get it out of your head that you have to have all these different types of connections in order to get into the music industry. You don't have to know a multi-platinum producer. You don't have to know a gold rank producer. You don't have to know any of these type of people. You don't have to know a, a manager. You don't have to know engineers that have been in the game for tens of twenties of thirties of years. You don't need that stuff. All you need is the music that these people or these companies are looking for. That's it. Anybody can join this game. The question is, are you gonna follow the steps that I've outlined in the video? So that was a lot of information. Let's now take a look at an actual example of me looking at a music library, finding their submission policy guidelines, and then listening to other songs that I make that will get me into this library. So what I've typed in here is music libraries for film and TV. You can type in a slew of different combinations of those same words, and you'll probably get a couple different options every single time. Like I mentioned, there are thousands of music libraries that you can possibly submit to. So first I wanna take a look at some of the royalty free stuff and I'll just click Epidemic Sound cause it's like the first one that pops up. Let's do all the fun stuff. So it says royalty free music for your videos. All right, we see electronic dance, film, pop, hip hop, classical and acoustic, all right. Again, this is going to be royalty free music. So we talked about what that was earlier, right? Like I talked about, these are subscription based models. Usually 
here we see there's a different pricing plan that's out of the scope of the video but again just to kind of prove that point if you scroll down to the bottom of these pages you can see let's see for artist let's soundtrack the world together so now we see submit your music before i click that let's continue to look and read all right it's giving you a bit of information how you get paid how you grow those type of things all right if i click submit your music we see what we have here before you continue please read our policy i click on that policy just to show there's a bit of information that you want to look at all right so make sure you're reading this information before you submit for this specific opportunity, right? Again, in short, we see name, artist name, email, country, your gender identity, primary genre, solo or group, you're applying as what? Here's a link to your music. Are you a member of a PRO? We talked about that. Do you have a current agreement with the record label or publishing company? You fill out this all of this information. Once you're done, I will select email a copy of your response and then submit. It's literally that simple. Let's take a look at the other opportunities that aren't royalty free. So here we have attackmusic.com. Again, they provide a premium music library for the TV and film industry. So first things that I'm looking for are, is the website up to date? Are they keeping up on their website? Because again, this is, this is where music supervisors are going to see first when they're looking for your music within a specific library. So for me, that's sort of the first thing. Uh, so let's see, trailer music. There's a couple of examples here. Since I make that type of stuff, let's take a look at something closely to see if it fits my idea or my concept of the type of music that I make. So I, I would say it does. Um, one thing as I was listening, I noticed that there's a couple of grammatical errors here. For me, that's a red flag. If they're not taking that much time to make sure that they're updating their own names within the library itself, for me personally, I pay close attention to those types of details. That's something that I would pay attention to. Um, sound wise, it sounds like it works. Um, well, another thing that you can also do is go to their composers and artists. There's a list of everybody that's currently a part of these libraries. <laughs> another pro tip, you can actually reach out to these people to see what their experience was within the music library, right? Are they, have they landed any placements? You can ask these types of questions to these people. Now, again, be, be careful because, again, now we're talking about someone else's business. But again, most people are really open. You'd be surprised to have these type of conversations. So, again, you can put these people's name in on LinkedIn, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and however you see fit to reach out to these folks. That's what I would do. All right. Let's see. We go to more. There's a contact us section. Right, it's a bit of information here about the founder. Let's see if I go to about us, it's a bit of information here. Now this library in particular, they don't seem to have a section that's going to show you about where or the type of places that they've received across the board. For me, again, that is another red flag. Just personally, if they're not able to show a potential submission or a, show a music library, the type of placements that they've currently landed, in my head, and this can be completely false, they're not getting any placements. Not now, they're not. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, when you send them the email, you can ask them what are some of the recent placements that they've gotten. That's perfectly acceptable. Just remember to be professional when you do so. So here we see for Attack TV and Film, they offer a non-exclusive agreement to music providers around the world. Would you like to be considered for our music submission playlist? Uh, let's see, please send us a link of your playlist below. So it has some information here and that's it. I don't recommend you call them. Um, I would send them an email first, see if you get a response, because again, that's going to let you know, are these people taking their own business seriously? 
the worst thing that you can do, the absolute worst thing that you can do is take all this time to build a catalog of music and then send it to somebody else, sit on your hands, waiting for a response, and then to never receive a response, right? So for me, I've already kind of highlighted a couple of different things about this particular library that I am not kind of confident in their ability to produce for me. You might be different. If you feel like this is an opportunity for you, go for it. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful in any way, shape, or form, make sure you like the video, leave me a comment about what you learned most from this process, and even if you have any questions, I'm not selling a course. I don't plan on selling a course. Instead, I'm gonna to continue to make videos like this that are actually gonna help you learn how to do this for free. Even further, your like and subscription to the channel is gonna help me enough. That's what's gonna fuel me to continue to do things like this on YouTube for free. Let me know in the comment section below again if you enjoyed the video. Even if you didn't enjoy the video, let me know in the comment section below. Take a look at my videos over here. I have a playlist that I put together that's gonna show you different songs that I've produced for film and TV. I try to get one video out a week about my actual process and I try to do an unedited version so you can really see what it takes and what I personally go through when I'm making music for film and TV. All right, y'all. Y'all know how I do this. Peace.